the Thoughty OT podcast. You know, the next thing that I really wanted to talk about is kind of like the strengths because, you know, there, there, there are a lot, a lot of things which can be quite unique about us that make us particularly good in like the world of productivity at work, but also within like relationships and stuff. Like we have certain qualities that tend to be a part, as I said, generalized, like generalized wise, be a part of autistic or ADHDers or ADHDers. So I guess like if you could think of some strengths, what what would those kind of be if you were to highlight them? Yeah, I think so thinking about like the combined ADHD strengths, like things that are common in both and that I see a lot. Um, the top one that comes to mind is creativity and divergent mm. thinking. Mm. Almost all ADHD people I've known or met have either been a professional creative in some form, right? Like a writer, like they do sure. something related to creativity or they approach their life or their work in extremely creative ways. Mm. And they've maybe created their own job description where they are or they, or they're an entrepreneur. It's also like yeah. a very, yeah. very common to just like not fit in, in the corporate world and do your own thing. Yeah. And having that ability to just like imagine something different and then do it, I think mm. is like a really, really powerful. I mean, it's, it's, pr it's probably one of our top skills and it helps with a lot of the problems, like it kind of offsets a lot of issues. Sure. Another strength I see is hyper. So it's not just hyper empathy because it, it can be hyper empathy. It can also be having social skills be a special interest, but mm. I do see a lot of ADHD people who have become either are naturally or have become very, very aware of yeah. the minute feelings of others. And I've I'm talked one of to those people. <laughs> yeah. And I've talked to other ADHD people where we're like, one of the problems for me as a kid was that I could see that people's facial expressions, their tone of voice, the actual words they were saying, and their body language, all four of those things were different. So I yeah, know they are much. lying to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like that there's this, and that I could just kind of pick up on that, or I, I got very good at picking up on that at some point. So, you know, that, and that can make it again, that can kind of make an autism diagnosis hard because they're like, oh, well you, you figured out social skills. And it's like, no, I read a bunch of books about body language, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and asked people a bunch of weird questions that made them uncomfortable <laughs> until I figured shit out. Yeah. Um, but that like the, the sort of skill around that, but there's the social aspect of it. But I think I also see a lot of, you know, people feeling like they don't, know who they are because they have this really chameleon quality of mm. being able to like mirror back to people. And it can make you very, that very conscious masking. Yeah, yeah. And it can make you very good in relationships where you are giving a lot. And so like yes. I'm thinking to a client I had who was just like, I, I know my partner's you know, my tiny preferences and I do them and I, I give them these super thoughtful gifts and I create these experiences for them and I do all these things for them and nobody ever does these things for me. And yeah. I was like, I think their brain just doesn't categorize information about people the way that your brain does. Like your brain yeah. is remembering all these little details and then being thoughtful and kind around it. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're thinking about you in this way and then being like, fuck her. I'm not going to do nice stuff for her. <laughs> right. Yeah. They just like, they don't remember these tiny, tiny details about the way you like things to be presented in a particular yeah. order. Yeah. Um, so that's a, like, it's a strength. And then it can also be hard to find people who like can match you in that level of empathy and care. It's true. Um, which makes relationships hard. It makes friendships hard. Another, I mean, I know, I know pattern recognition means a lot of things, but mm. like the, the ADHD kind of particular way I see it is, is not only to having all of this information, but being able to like put it into use. Yeah. So kind of having, again, whether it's just that whatever, I'll just try it, you know, mm -hmm, thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I have. Getting but started with things. Like. Being able to get started and not getting, st so not just gathering information and having the information, but like really actively doing stuff with it and trying yeah. to like either create something with it or yeah. put it into practical application or like come up with your own theories around it, which my brain is constantly doing. Like, I feel like, I feel like I have this theory is like yeah, one of yeah. my, you know, main things that I say, because my brain is just always not just gathering data, but being like, what can I do with this? How can I manipulate this? In individual yeah. parts of different things yeah. that you've heard and read and connecting that to other things that haven't been. Yeah. I so love connecting I'm, things. That's... Me too. And like one of my, like one of the ways I started to realize I was 
unusual is that I would go into conversations in areas where I didn't really know anything, yeah. except I'd kind of gathered some random data. And then as I was getting, like in a, in the course of it, like I was able to, as a 15 year old, help my first boyfriend who was a, an electrical engineer, who was a senior in electrical engineering, mm-hmm. I was able to help him with his homework. I didn't know yeah. anything about yeah. it. I was just able to look at it and be like, I understand how to formulate questions around this that are useful. Yeah. And just having a brain that can do that. And it's not mm. just, you know, being smart. It's like, it's this particular pattern finding and application yeah. thing that I think is like a particular strength mm. that can be applied in a lot of ways. And then this is an interesting one that I wish we used more. I actually think we're really good at knowing what our own strengths and weaknesses are. Mm. Like, I think we have a really good sense of what we're good and bad at, but a lot of societal, you know, conditioning is like, work on your weaknesses. And I actually think that that's a big waste of time for yeah. a lot of neurodivergent people. It's totally. like, no, just lean into your strengths because what Craft you're good life at- around your, your strengths yeah, and how you are You're work so and, good at these little niche things that you yeah. can actually build something out of that and make something mm. that's cool and fun for you and that you enjoy, as opposed to just focusing on your weaknesses and just being frustrated forever. Like sure. I am, I am never going to be good at meal prep and I don't care and I don't want to. <laughs> meal prep sucks and I hate it. And I- <laughs> or admin or yeah. Yeah, communications or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like that's another thing is, you know, you it might be reassuring to have someone outside of you tell you what you're good at, but really I think you probably already know. Yeah. Like you probably have a really good sense. It's just that we've been given all this Applying conditioning that around. Into- yeah. How and, to and craft a life path for yourself. Exactly. And being able to figure that out when, again, a lot of my own anxiety was around like, am I doing the right thing or am I doing yeah. the wrong thing? And yeah. knowing that I have limited energy, am I wasting my energy doing the wrong thing? So mm. there's this added layer, I think, that made me really anxious. Mm. Mm. 